Here's John Jay. And through five right turns field. at bat, they've only mustered John. a total of three hits. Yeah. Not terrible, but they're certainly not firing on all cylinders. Well, it's getting a little bit too late in this game if this continues like this. In today's game, with so many dominant bullpen arms, you certainly don't want to wait until the eighth or ninth to try to wake the bats up. Bouncer to the left side. There's Baez. And a bit of a high throw that time, but no problem over there at first as they record the out. The batter, number seven. Shortstop, Tim Anderson. Striding into the box, Tim Anderson. It was a flyout for him in his last trip. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. Yeah. Drops in a strike to start the at bat. Nothing in one. We're moving along in this one, heading into the middle innings. This guy continuing to pitch well, and one of the reasons why, first pitch strike ratio over 70% up to this point in this game. Behind 0-2 now. O2 now from Lester. Line toward the alley in left center. And that finds some outfield grass. It's a base hit. Boy, that's a crazy at bat right there. Takes two pitches, now two quality it. pitches, then gets a third four. one, and he gets a bullet for a single. I can't tell you how good that feels as a former hitter right there. 0-2, oh, you're pretty much dead to rights, and he comes through with a big knock. Pitch inside. The throw is not close as he's in there with a stolen base. So a chance here to perhaps get on the board for the first time as he's into scoring position on the stolen base. And as you can see there on the team leaderboard, he's currently pacing the club here. Oh, hold on here. Well hit into deep left center. And I don't think this one's coming back. No siree. This one is gone. So a two-run shot to left center, number 14 on the season. And the White Sox get a bit closer. It's now a 4-2 game. I think if this pitch would have been a little higher and in on his hands, it would have been effective. But he left this one belt high. Big mistake. He's a guy that will feast on belt high pitches on the inner half, which is pretty obvious now. Into the box, Jose Abreu. He'll Abreu. take a look at a strike right down the middle. It's 0 and 1. Line towards center field. Oh, he flubbed it. Man, I'm not That's sure what to make of this one. The ball was the hit hard, but it looked routine. Yuan. The only thing I could think of is maybe he lost it in the lights there. That's a tough break. Into the box now, Yohan Moncada. As he'll take a look at a high strike that time, it's nothing in one. He's hitless in his two at-bats so far. Oh, can't spot the cutter any better than that. Nothing in two now. Hits are even right now at five aside. Liner toward right center. And there's out number two as this is taken in shy of the track and the runner will have to retreat. Now batting. Catcher. Wellington Castillo. So it's a runner at first with two men out and into bat next the catcher Wellington Castillo hit hard to the right foul tying run at the plate the 0 1 hit high and deep to right center giving chase his Elmora he's got it a great running play and that'll retire the side two in the inning for the Sox however they come on this two run home run. Bottom of the sixth coming up. It's the Cubs four and the Whites. At the plate, Wilson Contreras. He'll have the opportunity to kick things off as we begin the home sixth. Here's the first pitch to him. Good fastball down around the knees there, taken for a strike. 
Action in the White Sox bullpen now as they have a left-hander getting loose. Into the windup, here comes the 0-1. And, and a check swing here, but he pretty clearly broke the plane, and it's 0-2 now. And they'll try to tempt him with a curveball, but this bounces in front of the plate, and it's 1-2. and two. Tried to get him to chase that 0-2 curveball there, but he wasn't biting. Very well could see it again here, though. The one two is taken for ball two. Hit on the ground toward the left. And that's out number one. Now batting right fielder, Jake said. Hayward. Ready for another chance. Jason Hayward. 0 for 2 from him so far in this one. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. And it's fouled away. He's ready. Here's the 0 1. And he pulled up in time, but it's a cold strike two. Oh, and two. Snatched out of midair at first base for route number two. The batter, number 13, second baseman, David Brody. Now batting, David Brody. Hit the ball pretty well in his last at bat, but it resulted in a line out. Yeah, Matty, it's always a little frustrating when you square one up. You hit a solid line drive like he did, and all you have to show for it is a jog back to the dugout. That can get in your head for a little while. Throw to first will get him easily, and the side is retired. Cubs are down in order as they can't add to their four to two lead. Welcome back here to the historic friendly confines of Wrigley Field getting set for the seventh now with the Cubs out in front and before the inning gets underway let's get a look at our game summary to this point. Into the box number 20 he comes in 0 for 2 thus far even though we're moving number into the 20. back end of this game they're only down by a couple of runs you know that old slogan a bloop and a blast they could certainly use that right now. And Lester back to work as this is swung on and missed for the first strike. And this misses the outside corner, so it's knotted up at one and one. Now the one and one pitch. Turn gone, but that's ripped foul down the third baseline. Now Lester deals the one two. And a half swing that time, but it's a full swing in the eyes of the umpire, and that'll be the first out of the inning. I think that's one of the toughest calls for an umpire to make. The check swing Number appeal. 84. Hitters rarely feel like they went, and I don't think he likes getting rung up there by the first base umpire, but looking at it, it's Ladies hard to say for sure that he please. didn't go around. Yomer Sanchez will move into the on-deck circle five. now to try to get something Carlos. started here with one gone in the inning. Curveball looked at here for strike one. He enters play here at 288, five homers and 21 driven in. Behind 0-2 now. Seventh inning here at the ballpark, 4-2 our score. Again, he sends it out of play. Struck him out. 
Well, that call looked like it was a little in the pitcher's favor, but it wasn't outrageous. Hey, listen, calling balls and strikes is a really tough job, and even the best are going to miss some from time to time, especially when they're sort of borderline like that last one. Not sure the hitter would want to hear that, though. In now, Leori Garcia. As Lester jumps ahead of him here with strike one. He's got a hit in three at-bats to this point. And that last pitch was number 74 for Lester in this one. Now a swing and a fly ball. And no one will track it down. Two out, nobody on. It's a high fly ball headed for the left field corner. If it stays fair, it's gone. And this will wind up being nothing more than a long foul ball, and it'll hold the count at 0-2. That's inside and low. It's a ball and two strikes. Belted high in the air out to left. Schwarber going back at the track. Off the LED board and gone. A solo shot here to left. Sixth home run on the season for him as it's trimmed to a 4-3 game now. in now John Jay down the first baseline but a foul ball here 0 and 1 0 for 2 for him to this point the wind up and the 0 1 hit in the air out to left field Schwarber is there and that ends the inning Ladies and gentlemen, White Sox able to draw a bit closer thanks to this home run. Stretch. Get up and stretch. Home half of the seventh coming up. It's the Cubs four and the White Sox three. Your Josh Osich gets the call from the now pen to take over on the mound and start the home seven. Number 64, Josh Osich. Addison Russell is into the on deck circle now as he'll pinch hit for the pitcher Lester. Russell. In there, no balls and a strike. And he's carrying a batting average of just over 300. So clearly he's been a productive player with the bat in his hand so far. He flew out in his last at bat. He's ready. Here's the first offering. Nope. Foul ball. Nothing in one count. Here it comes. Hard hit ball to second. Reined in. And that's the second out. Now batting left fielder Kyle Schwerber. So the batting order turns over now and set to go Kyle Schwerber. He's 0 for 2 thus far in this one. He comes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. A shot down the first baseline. Good slider there gets a swing and miss. Osage, a native of the state of Idaho, he was taken in the sixth round back in 2011. 
hey, nothing has been handed to this guy, drafted in the middle rounds, and he has found his way in the big leagues. This has turned out to be a really nice pick. Now the 0-2 pitch. Good job to spoil that one away, and he stays alive. Here's another 0-2. Oh. That misses 1-2. and two. Again, a one two and a slider runs away from him there and the count levels at two and two. And the cutter got him swinging strike three and the side is retired three up three down for the Cubs but they hang on to a one run lead four to three. Kyle Ryan will come on now, now and he'll slide into the seven guard. spot in the lineup Number following 56. the double switch. Kyle. Addison Russell is Ryan. also into the ball game as he'll this hit in the number eight spot here. Digging in and looking for Number more, Tim seven. Anderson. Two hits Addison. in three at bats for him in this one. Up and away to start the inning. It's one and oh. As we near the end of this one, it's clear the long ball has played a big role in today's outcome. Dan Dero, what are your final thoughts on what we've seen? Yeah, just non-competitive pitches in some big situations, Dan, and the offense took full advantage. Yeah, you know, Dero, one of the things about pitching is you want to have location, and it was obvious in this one today that the pitchers weren't on point, and what happens when that happens? Hitters make you pay, and the long ball was a big part of this one here. Good pitch right there from the reliever. Tough for hitters to do much with pitches in that location unless they're looking for it. Even count, two balls and two strikes. Now a change of locks him up as he looks at strike three called one away. Tight game here. Four three our now score battle. as we take the opportunity to compare the performances turned in by the two starters. So now it'll be the four hole hitter Emo Jimenez. He's working on a one for three thus far. And that last at bat when he went deep, he turned around a pretty good fastball. So I'm kind of thinking this guy's a good fastball hitter. So I might want to move that ball up and down and in and out and try not to throw it right down the middle of the plate. Good cutter there, and he's got him behind the eight ball now, 0 and 2. Hey, as a hitter right here, you can't be leaning out over. I know those first two pitchers were in the outer half, but nothing saying he can't ride a fastball in right here. Boy, tough to lay off, but he's glad he did. It's one and two now. And he strikes him out as well. So make it back-to-back -back punch outs here to the first two men he faces out of the bullpen. Eighth inning here from Wrigley Field, and the bums are happy in the bleachers. The homestanding Cubs lead this one over their inner city rival White Sox as you get a look at the line score to this point. So coming to the plate, Jose Abreu. He could really use a knock here, 0 for 3 in the game so far. Fouled off. Tying run at the plate, the 0 1. Hit weakly back to the mound. Throw to first in plenty of time, and the side is retired. One, two, three, go the White Sox. Score holds at 4 3. Ladies Evan Marshall gentlemen. will come Your on now as he'll be appearing in his 45th game this year. Number 43, Evan Marshall.
digging in once again. Chris Bryant. It was a solo shot for him in his last at bat. Yeah, that last at bat, Daddy, he turned that. Oh, yeah. And he can't come up with it. And a good effort as he's able to gather it in and make the play for the first out. The first baseman, number 44, Anthony Rizzo. Now to the plate, Anthony Rizzo. He got on top of one and was a ground out victim last time. Here's the first pitch to him. Starts him out with a changeup for a strike. Hey, that's a great job by the pitcher to get ahead right there. You know you got a star hitter at the plate. He's not afraid to go to two strikes or go deep in the count. That's what you have to do. You have to put him at a disadvantage with the count. Check the swing there, and Larry Bullard says he held up just enough. Ball one. Ball and two strikes to Anthony Rizzo. And he lays off the pitch outside as they draw even at two and two. This one hard the other way. Mulcata gloves it. Throw on to first to get him. Score it 5 3 on the putout, though it looked more like a 6 to 3 ground ball. Nevertheless, now there are two away now. Javier. Javier. Ready once again. Javier Baez. Fourth trip to the plate for him, and he's at risk of ending that nice hitting streak that he's put together. Yeah, chances are it's on his mind, Matt, but you just have to let that get out of the way as best you can. You have to approach this at bat just like any other. Otherwise, you're just getting in your own way. Cutting it close here, but he now comes through it. in the Get eighth through. to extend his Real hitting sir. streak. Yeah, and he was staring Just at his last right. at bat right there, or probably his last at bat. Would have been tough to get him another A.B. in this one, but he's able to get it done. Hey, better late than never, and I'm sure when he walked into that batter's box right there, he's thinking, this very well could be my last A.B. of this game, so if I'm going to keep this streak alive, going to have to do it right now. Standing in now, Wilson Contreras, and that finds its way through for a base hit. Hey, after back-to-back two-out hits right now, this pitcher thought he was going to cruise through this inning, and now he's got traffic, and he's in jeopardy with a ball in the gap or a ball missed over the heart of the plate, a crooked number going on the board. So stepping in, Jason Hayward. Not much in the way of productivity from him so far, but he's got a chance to come through here in a crucial spot. Yeah, it's time now that he has to put the rest of those bats behind it because none of that matters if he can clutch up when it really counts. Back up the middle and in for a base hit. Good throw will wind up holding that runner at third, so the bases become loaded now with two gone. And if the Cubs are thinking about turning to their bench here, there you get a look at what's available for them. Carlos Gonzalez will be called on as a pinch hitter here in a big, big spot. He'll have the bases loaded with two out in the inning. Fastball, well outside. Well, you know, giving up three straight hits is bad enough, but now it looks like he's starting to nibble a little bit. It's hard not to when you're getting hit, but you don't want to put yourself in bad counts. Oh, now a line drive, and he's not going to have a play on it. And right, this ball gets down for extra bases. One run is scored. Two runs have scored. And a relay to the plate. And he is in there. Well, he was definitely not looking off speed on that pitch. I'll tell you, he had to be sitting on a fastball on that one because it's coming in hot. And he still manages to get out front of that and yank it for two bases.
Enters here looking to get the final out before the ninth inning. Number 41, Kelvin Herrera. Here's Addison Russell as he'll send a ground ball down to third. Oh, and it eats him up a bit. Hey. Hey guys, I think the pitcher was just trying to steal a strike right there. I do not think he expected to get ambushed on an 0-0 get me off the breaking ball. But that's exactly what happened. Into the box, Albert Almora. He swings and grounds it to short. And that'll get by into center field for a base hit. And the runner scores from third as they extend their lead. You know what I like right there, Dan, is the batter's Down approach. Back. Not That's trying to do too much. Kyle. Just taking it right back up the chute again. Water staying burn. within himself. And just knowing that anything to the outfield gets him an RBI. Now that's a good piece of hitting. That's a great point, D.R. I think a lot of times hitters go up there trying to do a little bit too much. Sometimes you just have to go ahead and hit the ball where it's pitched. And a good job. And a run batted in. Into the box now, Kyle Schwarber as he rips it on the ground to second. And that's through into right field for a base hit. And they'll put the brakes on that runner at third, and that means the bases are loaded now, now with two away. He looked Ready. a little bit out in front right there, but he's oh, able yeah. to pull that ground ball through the hole for a single. Here's Chris Bryant now. He hits here in a spot where he might be able to put this one out of reach. Yeah, Matt, down five, another run across here could very well put the nail in the coffin. Mentally, they might still feel like they've got a shot if they can get out of this jam, though. Fastball too high to start him out here, 1-0. and oh. Looked like he just tried to do too much with that fastball right there. He, he overthrew it a little bit. That's pretty much the case when you airmail a fastball like that. One and one the count now. Four runs here in this half inning. Nope. Two and one. Well, when the pressure starts to intensify, it often feels like the strike zone gets harder and harder to hit. This is a big spot here. High and deep to center field. It's a grand slam. So he promptly unloads the bases with that one. His second of the game as they've pushed this lead up to nine now. So they'll go to the bullpen now, now and it'll be the left-hander here to face the upcoming left-handed batter. Aaron Plummer. Anthony Rizzo will be the first Come one back. to greet him as he'll start fresh base here base. with the bases empty Anthony. following the home run. Rizzo. First pitch coming, here it is. High and deep down the left field line. And this will wind up a foul ball. The 0 1 pitch fouled away. A pause, and the 0 2 he is swung on and missed. He got him on strikes. Another good inning for the Cubs here, and you don't need me to tell you that these folks don't need much of a reason to have a good time. Back with more from Wrigleyville right after this. Pedro Strope comes on from the pen, hoping to finish this one off here in the top of the ninth. Step 
stepping in. Johan Moncada, his career line against Pedro Stroke. Just a couple of matchups, no hits and two at bats. But this will be gloved out there at second as he didn't have far to go for the out. Next for Chicago. The a reminder that coming up well, after the ball game tonight, we'll have field. full highlights of the game exclusively right here on the show. Here's the catcher, Wellington Castillo. He's hitless in three at-bats to this point. Fastball taken, but that gets the zone for a strike. Called strike 0-2. Now the 0-2 pitch, grounded down the third baseline. Throw on to first, and the White Sox are down to their final out now. Now batting, number 20. Stepping into the box, number 20. 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts for him to this point in the ballgame. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. Low for ball one. Line drive to center field. But he will make the catch on the hard hit ball out there. And that will conclude matters here as this ball game is over. Yeah, and they just keep on keeping on. Got a nice little run going here, winning four in a row and playing with a lot of confidence. Success is never guaranteed in this game, so you have to appreciate it when it comes. 12 to 3 is the way this one ends. Chicago jumped out to an early lead in the first and never looked back. John Lester earned his fifth win of the year. Michael Kopech was only able to work four innings as he takes the loss. So that just about does it for Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, Heidi Watney, and our entire crew. I'm Matt Vaskersian. You've been watching MLB The Show. For more, make your way over to theshownation.com.